Well, boys, today's the day. Well, I think these boys are ready to go to work. If you saw my last video, you know that was the intent then, but due to my own fault, uh, some things didn't work out and pretty much nothing that day worked out like it was supposed to. But as you saw in the little intro there, I do have the crayons that I need for the marking harnesses. I've got the harnesses pretty much ready. Uh, they'll have to be adjusted and everything when I put them on the rams, but I'll show you that in a little bit. So the first order of business today, um, well, I need to get the ewes up, sort them into their uh, two different breeding groups. One group will go with one ram, one group with the other, and they'll be kept separate. That way I know which ewes are bred to which ram for my record keeping. And uh, before I do that though, I still have the scale set up at the end of the chute. So I'd like to bring the feeder lambs in run them across that, get a idea of what they weigh. And that's kind of helps to get them out of the way. Anyhow, I'll bring them in, lock them in a little pen, have them out of the way while I do everything else. And then I'm going to put them back on the pasture where the ewes are at right now and move their feeder over there. And one group of the ewes will go where the feeder lambs are right now, because they've really got more grass over there than they're eating. And that's where most of my grass is, what little bit there is with the lack of rain that we've been having. So with all that, I guess we better get started. I'm moving around the barn a little bit cautious this morning because every once in a while I get the whiff of a skunk. I'm afraid, well, I was gonna say, I'm afraid he's gonna rear his ugly head, but he might rear his ugly rear end. Here yeah, she. Here yeah, she. Come on, girls, you can hear me. Here yeah, she. Here yeah, she. Come on, girls. Here yeah, she. Come on. Ah, uh, no. Now you figured it out, didn't you? They're all awful skittish. Sometimes you just gotta work a little smarter. Come here, girls. Come here, girls. Come on, Pete. Here, girls. Come on, sheep. What's the matter with you three? What has gotten into you all today? Come on. I put you some nice corn in there. You all know where to go. Psst. Go on. Yeah, you too. Come today, y'all want to be a pain. Might have to open that other gate, give them two choices. This is where a good dog comes in handy. <sighs> y'all know there's corn in there. Okay, let's try it again. And you just walk right down that fence, walk in that gate. Maybe that'll work. Come on. Psst. Psst. There's always a couple of you want to go the wrong way, isn't there? I don't care which gate, just pick one. Now, 
that one closed. And close this one before they come all the way around. My girls, that wasn't, shouldn't have been so difficult. All right, with the ewes over here out of the way for a few minutes, see if we can get these boys in here. They are not very cooperative normally because they're just not used to being driven around and handled very much. But my hope is they'll come in here when they see or smell the ewes in this area. See how this goes. Well, you boys are better than the ewes, and they're supposed to know what they're doing. These three were kept for feeder lambs, and they're actually growing pretty good. Uh, the one on the far side over there really wouldn't make somebody a bad ram for breeding. He's turned out better than I thought he would. These were the three top weight gainers. I didn't pay any attention really to confirmation or anything like that. I knew these were gonna be feeder lambs. So I wanted the ones that were gaining weight the fastest. And these were the top three. I'm starting to rethink that one though. Well, I've got the scale head put back on, the scale set up. Let's see what these boys weigh. Just set up and ready. heavier than I thought. 147.3. I've actually gained weight pretty well. He's pushing 150 pounds. And actually I think this one will weigh more than that. Yeah, this might actually be the smallest one of the three. Alright buddy, we'll let you out. Fifty-three. Oh, yeah. You are twenty-four, twenty-five, one thirty-one. You're actually the lightest one. Well, they surprised me. I thought they would all be in that 125, 130 pounds. Thought they'd be close to 130. But the lightest one is 130, and the others are. 140 and 150. All right, boys, let's go try out some new pasture. Now you'll go over and find that other gate and go out in that field. So all I have to do is come and close the gate. Now the next order of business is to swap out the spin chute and scale for the sorting gate. Now this is my crude list of how I'm going to divide these ewes up, whether they're going in group one or group two. And I go back through the records of these ewes and try to determine which one I want to put with which ram. Now both of these rams are new this year, so I don't have a lot of information to go on other than um, one of them is in the NSIP program. And so I've got that data to go by and I go by the data that I have myself on these ewes, and they are also in the NSIP program, so I can kind of compare that. But I kind of have to go by that and some confirmation and different things like that and just determine who I'm going to put with who. Let's get started.
Come on out here. Are you coming? Come on. Uh, we'll spread across. There you go. Now, if we can get these boys to leave the girls alone for a minute, I'm going to put them in the chute and put their harnesses on them. Let's see if we can get them in there. Yeah, there we go. We got you now. No, not yet. You're ready, buddy. As far as I know, neither of these rams have ever had a breeding harness on. I'm sure they're going to need to be taken up. Don't pop me in the face. Take it up, buddy. Last guy to wear it. It's bigger than you. need to be pretty snug. Make sure nothing's crossed. Yeah, let's get you figured out. You're all right.
here. in here. This one goes that way. Be sure I'm straight. So now I need this ram with this bunch of ewes. The other ram goes with the ewes on the other side of the gate over there. This bunch of ewes are going to stay here. So I'm going to have to figure out how to swap everything around so that I get the right group of ewes staying at the pasture here and the other group I can load on the trailer and take to the summer pasture. So they're going to spend uh, at least a couple of weeks over there. The simplest way to get them together is going to be to open this gate over here. I can get this ram back over here where I'm at, let the ram that's still in the chute, I can let him go through here then since that gate will be turned around this way and he can get with the ewes he's supposed to be with. I'm just wondering how much harder that's going to make it to load them in the trailer when he's going to be chasing them around. Well. I don't know that we got a choice. So let's spin this gate around. Keep that ram on the other side. Well, let's open this gate and let these use out with their ram because the other use because the other use need to come through here to get to the trailer big boy your turn go on out there duck your head Gonna go for me. Good girls. Good girls. Come on, girls. And everybody. One other thing I did want to talk about is this grass right here. This is Johnson grass. 
they actually like to eat that. It does pretty good. It grows good in the heat of the summertime. The problem with it is it has been really dry. And when it's really dry and then you get a rain, it can get high in nitrates and actually give your sheep uh, nitrate poisoning, which can kill them. It can, it can even kill a cow. So I did make sure that I had this fence right here divided out so that they are not on this right after this rain. I probably fence this off so that they are not on this for a couple of weeks just to be sure that everything is okay. There's just this one little patch and there's another patch over there a little further, but they've got plenty to eat, but I would rather them stay out of it. Just something to watch for in your pastures, especially if it's been particularly hot and dry and then you get a rain. It's also bad uh, right after you get a frost on it. So be aware of it. I'd say that you is in heat. She's standing there for him pretty good. Turning around, looking at him. 22-28. She's already got a yellow rump. Hey, darling. Let's open this up and let y'all out. Yep, you too. Well, it's been sprinkling and raining a little bit off and on all day, which has kind of made it a little hard to get a few things done, but I am not gonna complain about the rain. We need it way too bad. So I appreciate you joining me on this video. I do wanna mention one other thing, and that is if you heard me mention a little earlier in the video about the Kentucky Sheep and Wool Producers Association, uh, the meeting we had last night was about the kind of final uh, details of the annual conference, which is coming up on October 19th. So mark that on your calendar, October 19th. Follow that link, you'll find out how to get to that conference. It's a great way to network with some other sheep producers, find out some information. The Kentucky uh, State Agriculture Commissioner is gonna be there. There'll be representatives there from ASI and Farm Bureau, be some vendors there. Then we're gonna have a uh, lamb lunch. And then we're gonna take a tour of a sheep farm. So I'll be around there, look me up if you see me there. Uh, be some other great people there that we can connect with and make some good contacts. If you happen to be a goat producer instead of a sheep producer, then uh, follow the same link because you can go to that same conference and it's kind of together and then it sort of splits off and the goat people have a goat lunch and they go tour a goat farm. The sheep people do a sheep lunch and tour a sheep farm. So it's a really good way to network and like I say, follow that link. And I appreciate you watching the video and we'll see you next time.